Hi guys, Nigel here. Hope you're all well. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and if you have already, thank you very much. Um, this is going to be a fairly quick video. We're going to go to the bench and I'm going to show you what I've been up to. The last video I did on the noses, as you know, I showed you all the errors with the kits and basically what I thought needed doing. I've now done some work and I want to show you that work. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm also posting photos over on ARC because before I go any further, I want someone to tell me, you know, is something wrong? Do they think I've got something wrong? And, and sort of just basically get a bit of um, a bit of conversation going. Um, obviously, not one of the kit manufacturers, other than Revell with the D, everything else that's come out since then has been, in 72nd scale, has been in error. So the itinerary kit, both the G and the H, are really, really pointy. The model collect kits are, well, I don't know where they are. Um, so I'm going to show you again what the kits are like and what I'm doing to correct it. So please in the comments below give me some feedback. Um, let me know if you're interested because obviously if there's no interest in this stuff there's no point in me bothering making moulds. I may as well just glue on what I've, what I've done and use them for my own model. Um, but obviously if anybody wants this then, then, then just let me know or, or express an interest. You don't have to commit or anything. So um, Without further ado, let's get to the bench and I'll show you what I've been doing. And if you haven't already seen it, yesterday, today is Wednesday the 22nd of July 2020. Yesterday the 21st, I put up a video on the an unboxing of the HPH 148th B52, which is gorgeous. Um, and over the next couple of days, I'll be doing reviews on the actual kit itself all the resin that's in there and giving you some close-ups on the, the photo etch and the, the decals, and the, the resin parts and everything and how it all goes together. It's quite incredible how it all goes into that sort of pre-assembled fuselage. I've also had this come in the post today. Um, this was recommended by um, uh, Bone Fragments and this is an Army Cast uh, B1B, you can see it there, B1B... Um, bomb rack system is very expensive um it's like 70 pounds by the time it got to me but um it looks very very complicated and very very interesting so i thought i'd give it a go i might do you can see on there that like, euros 59.95 i don't know if you can see that there you know I, I got it from the aviation hobby store but this stuff this army cast tends to go in and out so i've also ordered a set of flaps for the 48th b1 as well i've had the b1 for years and made resin parts for it and thrown them away and got them as well anyway i'm waffling let's get to the bench and i'll show you what um what i've done with these uh with these b52s okay so we'll start looking at the model collect kits and basically here this is the original knows you got if you bought the um, the Old Crow Express kit and as you can see very very fat and short and blah 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 it's actually the right length um, then there's this one here which is the early G model so if you get the one with the B28 bombs or the linebacker kit then that's the nose you get with that one and also I believe it's the nose you get with the early H if you notice it's got no fleur or anything on it and no ECM so um, basically there we go so that's those two there and then we've got this one here which is the nose you get I've been asked a couple of times this is actually the nose you get with the late B52H so late B52G uh, late B52G correction set with the tail and everything for an old crow and and basically late B52H that's the nose you get so there's your three model collect options now this one we can take out because it is no longer an option you you they don't make it anymore um, it's been replaced but if you have got this nose if you've got the old kit don't throw this away because the conversion I've done will actually fit this nose so you can actually save this nose and you know you could black out the windows or just I probably make some gla glazing for it and then you could put a panel on the back there with a magnet and have it stuck on the front of your fridge just as a, a B52 nose with my modified nose on it so yeah, and I'm also going to be doing an early G nose, so because this is all wrong, this is too long, it doesn't have a chine in there, so I'm going to be making the right, correct shaped nose with the chine and everything and a new underbelly panel um, to basically go on to this nose. So 
that will be cut here. No, it won't. It'll probably be cut all the way up here because they're all too fat in this area here. They're too wide. So um, I'll show you more of that in a minute. Also notice I've got all of these glued together. Now what I've found, I, I did talk about it in my last video and it does actually work. I've knocked together a cockpit. Just knocked it together. This is not my normal modeling skills and you can basically take any one of these cockpit any one of these fuselages and put this in um, I'm going to use a, a Paintbrush there to push it out. You can see even here the early one. Okay. This is the early wrong one So that you can push that one out and also the later one And you can see they all fit beautifully so you can actually build your cockpit Build the front section of the fuselage, do all your sanding and everything, do your conversion work, whatever you're going to do. And then you can fit the cockpit in and fit it to the rest of your fuselage. Now, I would always, always recommend with these this, these multi-part fuselage sections, I would always recommend building them up as sort of two halves rather than in tubular sections. But I think in this instance, especially with the conversion, it's best to do this and then deal with that seam afterwards. Um, there's a bit of seam work to do around these escape hatches here. Unfortunately, there's no escape hatches in the bottom. And then obviously there's a little bit of scribing to do if you want to keep these uh, monstrous panel lines. So, um, so there we go. One other thing of note while I'm here. Um, this cockpit was made for this nose. Okay. And as you can see, when it goes in, it goes up to about here. So the front of the cockpit floor comes up to about here where my fingers are now. Okay. Right, so if you look at the newer fuselages, or the newer noses, notice how much narrower it is here on this one than it is on this one. So basically, even if you're going to build your kit out of the box, you still need to sand away your cockpit floor. This one is cut away. I've done that for my resin conversion. I'll show you that in a second. But you need to sand away the front corners here. Sort of back. You can basically cut it out like this. I've basically this... This console area glues down into two slots. You can basically come across to those two slots and you know, and cut something off the front and it will give you plenty of clearance and it's got all the support it needs. Um, so that's that. So my resin conversion is this. Okay, and you can see there's not a lot left of the original. So if we use this one, which is the one you've got your late B52H kit, you can see there there's not much left. And what I've done basically got it so you cut 10 mil forward of this panel line and you cut along this panel line here and then across a theoretical line where the nose cone would be and then basically this will fit in like that and the reason I've done it like this is because the fuselage is all too fat here um, so I thought I may as well come back in one piece rather than have you cutting up to here along there up there and like may as well just cut it out got one cut down there one cut down there one cut across there job done um, and then this will just slot in so you can see that just slots in like that and you can see that I've had to cut away the cockpit floor because obviously there needs to be some strength inside it so that basically goes in there like that as I said on ARC C5 Galaxy anyone <laughs> um, and then that will slot into there like that and just sit in and then you'll basically glue around the edges I don't intend to add any panel lines into this because I want to allow people to add their own panel lines because there's a lot of debate about what's right and what's wrong um, but basically that is my interpretation of how the front of a late G or H um, B52 should look so let me just show you that in comparison to the the latest kit offering and I'm going to stand up here so I can see what's on the camera and you can basically see the, like the ECM pod on the top you know the shape of the kit is all wrong Mine is correct. I've got the flange around there, which is exaggerated. Um, so you can settle that down if you want to. This will come as a separate resin nose. And then this part here will be separate from the nose. But um, you can look underneath and you can see the shape there is completely different. I'm going to remake these um, flurs as a, as a separate piece that glues on. Um, but yeah, basically, there we go. So you can see the chine on the on the model collect kit is way too long. This one is much shorter. This all still needs to be finished. So if you can see lines and ridges and lumps and bumps and stuff in it, that's because it's a work in progress. But I don't want to go and finish it perfect and then someone says, no, 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 that that chine should be higher or whatever. So I want to basically get feedback from people. Let me know what you think. 
and let me know what you think about that nose profile. I think um, I think it's a bit more realistic, don't you? Let's get it the right way up instead of upside down. Nice. I'm trying to hold it on because it just wants to fall off, obviously, because it's not glued on. Basically, there we go. That's the view you see normally when you're looking, you know, when they're coming in for refueling. And if you compare your photographs with that and that, I think you'll agree that mine is a bit more accurate. So obviously I need to add all these um, anti-static strips as well and everything that will all be on there. So um, that's the model collect kit. Now the AMT kit has the opposite. The model collect kit is all too fat around here. The AMT kit is too skinny, so I've had to fatten it out. So here's the here's the nose conversion for the AMT. Now it looks completely different, I'll admit, because. When you look at this, the, the actual windscreen frame on a B52 is quite a lot of the shape. And as you can see on here, if you look like there, the AMT kit, a lot of the windscreen frame is there on the clear part, whereas on the Model Collect it's not very much frame at all. So that's why it looks, and you can see in the top profile, it looks completely different, although the overall shape is about the same. Now, the AMT kit is right here and then it all tapers in. It's way too skinny underneath. The underside is just on the standard kit is way too skinny um, so basically what I've done is made this kind of fit so this is my resin dummy nose and then I'm still working on it I've added that same um, that same ECM pod on the top so and also what I've done I've made this so that it matches the kit fleur pods and then I'll make different fleur pods as well because some people may not want to mess with these I think they're completely wrong but um, basically so you can fit this to your model and it looks a lot better than the standard kit I'll, if I can find any photos I'll put some up now so you can compare them um, there we go so that's for the AMT kit and as I say I'm also working now once these are done once I've made these and I've got resin parts I can then use those resin parts and sand them back to make the early G nose which is much shorter has different angles the chine is much smaller um, so yeah we'll do we'll, we'll do some work on that and then I'll do another video so um, thanks for watching and hope you've enjoyed that again um, there's my two conversions there as you can see they both look slightly different because what we need to do is as, as I commented on ARC we need to make these look right now it's the same as if you're hanging a curtain pole in your house if your ceiling's off, it's not plumb. Do you put the seal? Do you put the curtain pole parallel to the ceiling, or do you put it plumb and have it looking out? You have to make it look right. So that's what we're working with. If you look underneath, I think we'll see there's quite a difference in the actual shape here. Okay, that's not so bad because the AMT kit is this so skinny and tapered in here. So um. But basically, it looks much better than the standard kit. So there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, give me some feedback below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you um, if you perhaps would be interested. And um, as I say, the beauty of this is because I've come back so far. Well, the reason I've come back so far is we can use this on any nose. So even if you've got an early G and you want to turn it into a late G, you can because this is going to fit. You just basically cut along that line cut down here and that's going to fit in there okay likewise if you've got a late one you can sand off these these fleur pods here you'll be able to use my early nose and turn your late nose into an early nose so um, if you have got this one that came with your original G kit and you've got this one from the correction set you could perhaps get this one for your H or late G and then get one of the early ones and use this as your fridge magnet I'm waffling again. I'll see you all soon, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.